Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Mind of On Carl B TV, brought to you by Glenn, the number one computer, I should have said mobile computer company in the world, as long as you live between the Sunshine Coast and Brisbane, Moby Tech, Queensland. <laughs> My guest today is Brody Gardner. Thanks for being here, brother. Yeah, no worries. So Brody Gardner, went to high school with this chap. I, this is the second time he's been to this particular location, I learned. Um, he came to a party that we must have had mm. here a while ago. Yeah. Did you say Brisbane got a dart in his hand? Yeah, yeah. He didn't even realise he got a dart in his hand. He was at wine. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was that been? Oh, uh, I don't. I don't even know. I don't know yeah. if it was after high school or. Oh yeah, I don't know. I think it was. Yeah. It must have been. It must yeah, have been. Like I, I years, was something. yeah. If it was during high school, there would have been no alcohol at the party. It would have been. Because <laughs> <laughs> I followed the yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah, because that's, that's what happens when we're in high school is yeah. alcohol. Happens. We all follow the rules. Yeah. But uh, so Brody, for as long as I've known, has been into art. And um, I saw you at the footy a few weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, I've been following you a little bit on and off. But since seeing you, I just had to scroll through your Instagram. And man, like I didn't realize. I, th- I would only see a post from time to time. Mm. And I'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. But they, like, I yeah, didn't realize like how many, <laughs> well, no, but, but how many projects or how much, I guess you've immersed yourself in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm probably one of the more diverse people, uh, visual artists that I know. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of diverse visual artists out there, but I just seem to be, yeah. You know, people just constantly say, can you do this? I'm like, yeah, actually I think I can. And then even I'm constantly doing first timers where I'm just like, nah, well, I've never done that before, but I'm, I, I'm like 90% confident I can. So yeah, that's good. And like, I guess confidence is key, right? Mm. It's where mm. you start. And if you never try, you'll never give it a go. Yeah. Well, I found that, yeah, you, know, you can't really, I don't know. You, I, I, feel, I feel like you never build confidence. You just got to like throw yourself at it and be yeah. like, all right, this is going to work. It's got to work. <laughs> Bloody <hell. laughs> and if it doesn't, you learn something. Yeah. You go yeah, you learn, yeah. 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 Uh, so if you want to check out, uh, Brody's work. I was going to say Bodig's work. Yeah. If you want to check out Bodig's work, bodig.studio or at Bodig on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Bodig, your street name. Is that yeah. what the cat's on the nah, streets? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah there, well, there's a, there's a few names. No, there's... um. So Bo, Bodhi, uh is the actual name, is the, is yeah. my name. Uh, so like my website is bodhi.studio. Uh, but Instagram is bodig, which it's now Bodig. Like right. there's no gap between it. There's no... Yeah. Dot point. So it's like people will constantly say that. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's not too right. bad. And you said, so Bodhi was what your mum was supposed to call you? Or yeah. Wanted to call you? It, I picked it up later in life because. Okay. Um, Sorry, just bros. I'll get you to bring that a bit closer to your mouth. Not working? No, it's working, but just to. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Nah, all good. I was actually going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So my mum was going to. I found out one day that it, that she was going to call me Bodhi based on. Um, Point Break. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And I was like, that that's rad. Like, yeah. the dude's literally <laughs> like, you know, this bank robber who, like, gets the money to fuel his endless summer. Like, that's rad. Yeah. It's Patrick Swayze. He's like, <laughs> I'm like, I want that name. That's cool. Like, I wasn't really, yeah. But um, it worked out better because it, it, it also presents better. Like, I even switched it around. That's not even the way you're supposed to say it. Right. Like, I spell it. So, like, the H and the D are the other way around. Yeah. And, like. Buddhist history and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I switched it up. Yeah. So what, I, like, so you were Brody until when, and then when did you start using Brody? Um, uh, I don't know. I think I was like, must have been 19 or 20, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Like everyone calls me that now. Like nobody, I don't know anyone who calls me Brody anymore. Oh, wow. Unless it's like, yeah, from back yeah, in high school. It's like me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I've got to switch it up. I then. still have to write it down on every form and stuff. Like I can't right, write it. It's legal name. Yeah. 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 So I, like I, one of the, I guess, not one of the reasons, but a awesome thing that you're working on coming up and it will be released by the time this comes out. So we get to talk mm. about it. Mm. It's the State of Origin mural. So you're mm. doing a mural for the for, for game two. It's getting released before. 
Yeah. Yeah. Whereabouts is that? Yeah. So we're going to do it off site now because it's supposed to be uh, presented like uh, within the, the, the train system. So yeah. around Roma Street uh, train that's being built up now. Okay. So basically it's going to be somewhere on the train system for the people going to the game at Suncorp. So it's going to be like in the public view and everything. And so there's going to be a big release and all that. But a lot of that stuff being working with, uh, you know, football stars and players and stuff because a few will be involved. They're still being confirmed, like literally uh, as of today, things are being confirmed. But uh, a few are going to be there at launch and stuff like that for the, yeah, for in front of the mural for the public and stuff like that. like I said, it's still, it's all being confirmed. A lot of the stuff when you work with, um, I don't know, people of importance, yeah, they, uh, it, 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 there's a lot of last second decisions. Like, and not a, not a lot. Like, I never know a lot. A lot I've done stuff in the past with different players. That's how I've got to this point working with the photographer for uh, the mail for the courier. Yep. Uh, which is what it's going through, but um. Yeah, and it's always like a lot of the time I have like a day, yeah. two days to to figure out what the hell I'm going to do once I know what they want me to do and when yeah. the player is going to be there. So yeah. you really just, it's all on the fly with this stuff. But I'm sure it's cool. I'm sure it's cool to hear you speak about it like you are now, but to see it up there on the screen, like because everyone listening is going to see it up there right now and see the finished project and it's going to look cool as hell. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so what, so you don't, you haven't even started scoping, like have you, so you don't know what you're painting yet. I I know roughly what has to happen. Okay. What, what needs to be there. And I've thrown it around in my head for sort of the budget, um, and the time scale. I've, I've adjusted the idea in my head. Um, but besides that, like until I know exactly, uh, cause it's, you know, going to be representations of players and stuff until I know exactly who and exactly what and exactly how many like even the scale of it like yeah, it because right. it, it, we're doing it offside it could change so until i know all those things it's hard to put a concrete idea so basically i come up with a simplified idea of the direction i'm going in okay and i'm pretty confident of like doesn't matter what the other variables are it's going to come together in this style and i know how much effort that style is going to take so yeah basically I, i'm you know, know as much. <laughs> I yeah. don't know that do much. It, yeah, you've got as much organised yeah. as you can without yeah. the final, yeah, I guess, yeah, do what draft. I can. Yeah. So w- when you say you've got it organised and you've got it scoped out, like is this something that you draw to use a computer to sort of design it or is it just up in the noggin until you get to the wall? Yeah, or? it's it's all in my head at this point. Like sometimes I'll do a lot of s- sketching around and stuff, uh, but generally it's all <coughs> in my head. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> bitch <laughs> cut it bro cut it um jesus i'm sorry for cutting you off there man i'm just having a bloody panic attack <laughs> it's, a, it's a, an allergic reaction to my eye I'm, I'm sure you've noticed and i'm sure the guys at home might have noticed uh jesus christ but back on track so <laughs> went so you like you, you you do this art with spray paint yeah well yeah. i like i do Depending on what what it is I'm doing, I of will. I, I try to use spray paint as much as I can. If it sort of, yeah, it's a tricky one. I'd, I'd use spray paint a lot. Like it, it's my favorite and most familiar medium. Okay. So when I found it, it wasn't like from you know, like we growing up out Moorfield Caboolture way. You're not as connected to that scene. There's a very heavy, very full on scene, like graffiti scene, spray scene, all that. Uh, and we weren't really that close to it. So I came into it sort of later I, after I did a fine arts degree in uni. Okay. I sort of came to it at the end and it was just clicked and I was like, this this works. Like I understand it. Like it's a weird feeling. Yeah. So I try to use that when I can because I guess I'm sort of specialised in it. But when it comes to murals and the bigger you get, the more and more like commercial paint you use, like right. the less spray paint you use because – it, it's just about coverage. When, yeah. If you're going big, if you're going a big wall, big project, lots of panels, like you, yeah, you don't want to do that with spray paint. Yeah, it's you got to fill in space. Ridiculous, and it takes a lot of paint. Like, yeah. 
It's almost a similar cost, but it is slightly more expensive with spray paint. But yeah. Well, usually, just, it's a, it, it, I work between the two. You, yeah, ra- you lay your bases, your yeah. groundwork, and then you build from there with paint. Spray. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably, this is probably a terrible analogy, but it would probably be like uh, colouring in a, a picture, right? Like you'd use mm. the, no, the, it, pencil, it is like that. the pencil to yeah. draw, and then you've got to fill in space. You're not mm. going to use a blue pencil and, and with a fine tip and try yeah. and like sp- scribble in the, the area. Mm. Is that kind of the, the go? It's funny you said that. It, it, it's not too far off. Like, Yeah, the beers are a bad oh, idea, Glenn. So it's not that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mind. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so it, the, you actually you're pretty pretty much on point because it is kind of like coloring in. So obviously it's not like buying a book and coloring it in, but you do lay a groundwork structure and then you fill it in from there. So the hardest part is actually getting the image up there the way it's supposed to be. And I go straight onto the wall with paint. You know, I don't, I don't use any pre-marking. Yeah, that's some, crazy. There are some situations where I'll use chalk um, and different things. Yep. Uh, that's more sign writing. Okay. Um, because you, you, you're playing with letters, compositions and spacing. And a bit different. Sometimes, it, you know, you'll do something up and you're like, yeah, this is all good. It's all to math and to scale. And then you stand back and you're like, actually, that's a little bit too close to that other letter. And it's a huge, yeah. like there's people who do sign writing like full time. It's like they're <laughs> masters at what they do. Yeah, um, letters are so tricky if you're trying to do like straight lettering. Um, but it is like that. So I, you know, well, usually I'll sketch with spray paint because it's a lot more loose. It's like drawing. And I'll lay out my sketch and sometimes I'll scribble over and over and over it with the same paint, but then I can layer heavily over that and then work from there. But it's like you put your lines down and then you know what's going into that space, you know? Yeah. You just fill the spaces in. Yeah. I guess that's like the benefit with paint, right? You just have to wait for it to dry and then you can just have more paint on, Mm. can't you? And it's amazing how fast paint dries on a wall. Yeah. Um, You know, with absorption and, and, you know, being outside and stuff. And then the spray paint is amazing. Because I use, it's a specialty paint, um, not, we right. don't use, I, I often say that to people, especially in like, if I run workshops and stuff, the first thing I say, you wouldn't have used these cans before because They're you, not know, the ones Bunnings, you, you, you can't yeah. get them at Bunnings. Yeah. You, know, you can't, you can't buy them in normal hardware stores. There are some stores starting to stock them, which is great, but yep. they are so much different. Why, so is, much different. why is it the case? Just the cost or people don't want. I guess that paint being used on <laughs> trains and, and walls and there, there, there is, there's a fair, there's a fair few brands from around the world that uh, dominate that market. Um, yeah. And they, they go as artist paints because they are like, like premium. The, 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 the big diff, there's a few differences, but the biggest difference is that, uh, that the pigment load. Right. So you're, you're getting something that you spray on the wall is generally, opaque it'll cover whatever you spray it over and it will just be so bright you know whereas yeah. you, you try to spray white knight or you know any of those like brands fiddly bits yeah. anyone anyone who's ever tried to spray their bike or whatever yeah. with with paint from bunnings will find will know that the enamel is like translucent yeah. and I've, it takes forever to dry i've never put like that together like I've used spray paint a few times mm. and yeah like the, you can see through the color mm. almost mm. and then I, I haven't really put too much deep thought into it but I was always amazed amazed by the bright colors that you mm. see with graffiti mm. sometimes and the big walls like uh, there's a street in Melbourne really famous street where the Kim, Hosea Lane yeah Hosea Lane I went down mm. there and saw Emily Ratajkowski and Kim mm. that that mural that was up mm. for a little while when I was living down there and I thought man that is just unbelievable <laughs> yeah. how someone's able to chuck that up on a wall <laughs> yeah but yeah, I guess I never thought about the, the quality of the paint that would have mm. to be used to yeah. go over existing color. Not to, to mention be like, bright. Uh, not to mention that like if you're leaving something in the sun, yeah, like it's got to be like a certain amount of pigment because the the like a lot there there are inks like some colors you can't get with pigment, and the same applies with tubes of paint yep. um, or the paints you get it in the stores like the big tins. Some will be better than others. And it's usually because the pigment quality or the actual pigment. So exterior colors, a good example is if anyone's ever, I'm sure most people, most adults have, you know, gone to the store to get a paint 
pick a color for some something a fence a wall or then you know whatever yeah. and they'll be like we can't do that color and if you're going for exterior like sunproof colors there's some colors they can't do because right. those colors are inks and they don't last in the sun and they're things that you got to be aware of too so there's only when dealing with clients it's it's often being like okay everything is a factor yeah if i'm going to work inside you, you got different options you know if you're outside you got other options and it really comes down to like how long is this war going to last how long does it have to last yeah and everything has a life you know yeah. we even get clear coats that we can put over to stop the uv right to make but, it last longer and but yeah but going back to the spray paint quickly it's just the valves are different. You can change the caps, which a lot of people don't know. Okay. So they're not like the little stick you see. Yeah, the little um, white thing. Yeah, that that's internal. So you can change the cap on top, which changes the size of the spray and the shape and all that. Oh, right. So that if you block sense. it, and because it's high pigment, if you block yeah. it, you throw it out, you put a new one on. Right. So, um, yeah. And there's, there's so much that goes into yeah. all that. So that's stuff that you can't. Yeah. You, you can't it, I, even in Brisbane is like one of the hardest places to do graffiti or spray paint mm. um, it's ridiculous besides countries that, where they shoot you <laughs> we've probably got some of the harshest laws for graffiti on earth yeah that's crazy it, it's um, like I was just thinking about you, you mentioned like the different cap sizes and the mm. different spray sizes like it just makes sense again mm. like you've got different size pencils for different things you've got I just didn't even think that mm. I just again assume that someone's got a spray paint bottle from Bunnings and they're somehow putting up this beautiful mm. art like you mm. never think about the intricacies that that are at play it's quite mm. interesting at where like where you've always been into art like you 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 said you did like an art like a tertiary sort of art thing while you're in high school mm. does it does it date back to before that were you always drawing as a kid like where where's your creativity come um, from i don't have a lot of memory of visual arts as a kid i i spent a lot of time uh because my siblings that were older were like way older different different mother right so i'd only see them occasionally I had a younger sister later but a lot younger so i was generally always by myself so i was always like reading or drawing or something but i don't remember a lot of the art stuff i remember being in high school and getting to a point where i was like I, you know i don't know what i want to do but they the school pushes you they're like what do you want to do like bloody hell like it's you run out of time so like you pick a direction do, bro yeah and i'm like yeah. oh well you know yeah well it's that thing i'm like well i'm not gonna know what i want to do so i said look i'm i'm good at art like i seem to be able to just do it and i enjoy it and i always get good marks for it and they're like Funnily enough, there's a school-based TAFE program where you spend like two days out of school at TAFE doing art and like three days at school doing your regular That would classes. have sounded awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, it did. I yeah. literally I, I was like, yep, sign me up. That sounds good. And then from there, it just, yeah, that's, for me, that was where it started. You know, like maybe grade 11. I was like, what, 17 or something. Yep. But um. For me, that's where it started. Yeah, you just never stopped. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, what was some of the art that you were doing in TAFE? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> like shading moons? It was it was that stuff that you, you, you that most people are familiar with. Like learning prime yeah. colors? Yeah, learning color theory, really basic color theory. Yeah. Like, this, is, this doesn't exist anymore. Like, it's a Cert 3. You can't do a Cert 3 anymore uh, in visual arts at TAFE. Because okay, it's rubbish? Well, they, <laughs> yeah, they basically got rid of it. They, they do a Cert 4. Yep. Um, it used to be separate. Now you do, as far as I know, the last I checked. Uh. <laughs> this beer's working out well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to burp under my breath. And yeah. Like, <laughs> just let it out. Yeah, it. Yeah. We'll start over. <laughs> um, so you used to be able to do a Cert 3. It would be like a year. Yep. Cert 4, a year. Diploma, a year. Now they've just put Cert 4 and Diploma together and it takes you a year to do the both. Yeah, right. Um, which is, if you want to get into uni for art, it's worth doing okay. because it's sort of like a ticket in. Whereas yeah. most people fight for a place at uni yeah. for art because they're limited places and usually you've got to put forth like, look look how good I am already. So Right. And would you um, also like need an OP as well? Like does that allow you to skip the OP and... Uh, they don't really consider it. Well, where I, I went to QCA, 
okay. um, which is at South Bank. Yeah. And at the time, it was really good. I've heard and seen pretty, you know, shit stuff about it lately, uh, which is unfortunate. But um, while I was there, I the best part about arts uni, like, there's a lot of de- a lot of controversy around um, going to uni for art. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest thing that made it for me was the lecturers and they were all and still are and have improved as like artists in the scene doing all diverse things. Like That's cool. my drawing lecturers, my print, I majored in printmaking, if you can believe that. No. So, you know, I, I couldn't get into painting because I was even more restricted. Like it was right. hard to get into painting because so many people want to do that. And I'm like, it seems like a waste of time to me to spend two years at uni doing paint. Whereas printmaking was like a mechanical process that was like so much involved. There's also heavily drawing based, which I always consider myself drawing based. Okay. Um, which is, I think, why spray paint works because it's like similar to using a, a marker. Yep. You know, you're, you're putting a solid line on the wall. It only becomes painterly if you use it that way. Yeah. That makes sense. It, it, it's interesting you say like uh, people question the le- legitimacy of going to uni for art, but mm. these days people question the legitimacy of just going to uni, man. Like yeah. <laughs> I, I went to study teaching yeah, and true. I left with a degree and not knowing how to be a teacher, you know, like it just, it, yeah. Anyway, it, there's a lot of questions when it comes to the education and oh, system and I'm yeah. sure we could spend a ton a of time lot. talking about that. The, it was something I wanted to mention though, like the, yeah. That it's a long, so I'm going to just be as brief as possible. But like the. No, no, you're right. Go ahead. Unified is actually a very big thing. It's a very important thing. Uh, basically, it's really hard to be taken seriously in uh, the architecture of the art system. So when the general public thinks about artists or being an artist, most people have the same idea. It's like some really bizarre person yeah. whacked out of their head on drugs or like. Yeah. You know, like doing really bizarre things or controversial stuff, or like unless throwing pain at unless walls. Unless they're a millionaire and, and then they're a genius. But anyway, yeah, anyone no, but then that. that's how they become a millionaire, yeah. right? So they they get that's picked up. I mean. Someone sees their work in a gallery, yeah. they pick it up, and it's like all of a sudden they're the biggest thing. And you know what? That's kind of that system. You know, that's the fine arts system. Yeah. Those artists are commodities, and so if you want to go that direction. Uh, you, it's hard to be taken seriously without uni. It's like right. if you haven't had any kind of fine arts education, then you don't understand yeah. fine arts. That's what they're teaching you there. That makes sense. And I guess like the general knock from the public, right, mm. is just like what are you going to do with an yeah, arts Yeah, what degree, are you going to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I copped a lot of that. It was funny. I, it was one of those situations where like you cop a lot of it and then especially from, you know, like I worked a lot of trade jobs and yeah. stuff and blokes and, you know, even like, you know, different people, you know, um, you sort of cop it a little bit. But then, you know, a few years on and you're getting paid to work with Jonathan Thurston and shit and they're just like, well, fuck. Yeah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, yeah well, fucking fair whatever. Enough, all right. <laughs> yeah, like. And, and I guess that's like just I- immaturity, you know. Like it's. Mm. Um, it's it not, it's misunderstanding from, too. Well, misunderstanding, yeah, yeah. It comes from someone who isn't comfortable or happy with their own life. Like they've mm. got to put someone else down for doing something that they're doing because they don't want to look at themselves, you mm. know. Well, and no, sorry, no. Well, no, well, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you, man, is because like I, I don't know what that thing is for me, you know. And you've you've clearly found something that you excel at. Like the work that you do is beautiful, mm. and and like I'm so envious of that, and I want to find that. And maybe this is it, and maybe it's something else, right? But and. Yeah, it just that that inspires me. Um, but yeah, younger me might have thought like, "What are you got doing on your uni study <laughs> yeah. art, bro?" Like, yeah. yeah, you know, it's just yeah, it comes from misunderstanding, immaturity, mm. um, a lack of self awareness. Mm. Well, the big the biggest thing is like, um, first of all, that's awesome. Thanks for telling me that. And um, also, this this right here, like, this has always sort of been you, I reckon. You reckon? You know, yeah, you've always been a good sort of presence you know like you talk well like that so okay. i reckon this is, is pretty much up your alley and right now like <laughs> this is an industry yeah like in any field like pick yeah. something and you can do like something like this you know yeah. it, it yeah there, there is an importance for it especially like a lot of it comes down to the person themselves and like 
there's a lot of people who won't come into something if they're like, yeah, no, I don't want to talk to that person. So okay. if you're someone who can always stay pretty pretty level, like whatever you want to understand that as meaning, <laughs> you know, people, doesn't matter where they're from, they're going to be like, yeah, no, I can I can do that. They're, yeah. they're, I don't mind doing that. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, big talk show hosts and stuff that celebrities are just like, there's no way I'm doing that. Yeah, and that's like, what you mean by I'm not level. talking to that person. That's what you mean by level, right? Like, um, mm. I it, it's disappointing to me because I've talked to some, I've been so lucky to talk to some really cool people since starting this and just the humility that they've shown and it just proves to me that they're just another person on this earth, right? Just another person. That's it. And like, just another person. Mm. But then there are some people that definitely like – perk themselves up a bit. They ride on what, however they label themselves and, and not just people in the media, but like people at a business who mm. have got a promotion when they were younger or, mm. or got a promotion yesterday and they walk with this chip on their shoulder and think that they're better than anyone. Dude, <laughs> yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Some other person trying to get through life. And if that's the, if you're conning yourself that way, man, there's one day where it's all going to hit you like a ton of bricks <laughs> and you're going to come falling down. I, yeah, I never <laughs> understood it. Hey, like even, like I've been lucky uh, to work with some amazing people mm. um, in all kinds of fields. And I just, it's never hit me like that. I've never been a big fan, yeah. like fan. I, I don't understand fandom too much. Like I, I get it, but I don't, I've never got it. He's so never I, obsessed. I don't, about, I don't, yeah, yeah. I'm not like, wow, this person, like, yeah. I'm just like, I love what they do. I, you know, maybe I'd like to meet them. A lot of the time I'm like, actually, I don't want to meet them because I enjoy what they do. Yeah. I don't want to meet them. I want to see what they do. Like, I understand this role, what we play here. Yeah. Um, but some people are just obsessed. And I'm like, that's, you know, right, you know, right on. Like, they lose their, lose their shit over meeting someone, you know. Like, but um, I think that's another reason why I, uh, the photographer, like, going back to the, the sports guys. Yeah, please do. We better talk about it at least at one stage. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Well, going yeah. back to that, it's like the, the sports, the sports, like, they're so, especially, um, you know, footy players in in Australia, like that's kind of our, oh, I, want to, I don't want to say top sport. But I'm going to say it's like one of the more like regular fandom sports, kind of like soccer in England or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not the biggest. It might not even be the biggest sport. Cricket might be bigger. I don't know sports. AFL. Yeah, right. AFL. <laughs> no, no. What, in England? In England? <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's in, why. No, I no, but, out. Yeah, but, yeah. no, but in in Queensland, you're right, 100% you know, right. Rugby league in Queensland, people are obsessed massive. with them. Yeah, like if they yeah, met they Thurston, they would like They'd shit lose themselves. Their minds. Yeah, yeah, like I'm yeah. like, that's cool. But the photographer who is what really started this path for me, like I've been working in collaboration with her. Uh, Annette and what's Duke. her name? And shout out Annette Dew. Oh, you you literally yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Annette, it's a, <laughs> yeah. No, but I was actually I struggled in two said Annette Dew. Annette Dew. Yeah, like Dew Drop. Yeah. Thanks, Annette. So yeah. She's a champion. Like they, she gets along with them. Like, yep. um, uh, I don't know if he mentioned it. Jeff Horn. Yeah. I don't know if he mentioned her. Not yet. Not yet. Um, Cause yeah, he was one of her first like mm. uh, sports stars that she was really trying to like, she does interesting stuff with photos that no one else working right. for the mail and stuff do. So, which is a fight to get them to, go with these ideas and a lot of the time like a lot of the nice images that we did they crop them out and you're like what was the point you know yeah. like but the players love it and they get a part of it and they like doing something different and the fact that we can just talk to them and we were like you know no stand over there no move like oh no just can you scratch oh change that or act like you're laughing you know like you just like it doesn't feel like they're not worried, you know, yeah. you, you're not there being like, people. oh, my God, nice to meet you. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming out. It's like it is thank you for being here. Like, really, thanks. You know, I oh, appreciate this. You know, yeah. we're, we're not – like a lot of those early stuff, there's not a lot of money coming out of it. No. But, um, yeah, it's just that just that attitude. Like, you just got to – they are. They're just people. Like, you imagine being in that position. I can see how you become Kanye and you're like, oh, I'm the best. Because yeah. he's done some crazy yeah. shit. Like, Who's after achieved? doing all that, Who's like, achieved? how do you not think, yeah. like, how I'm the you best? Like, yeah, 100%. But, um, yeah, but going back, to, before we get away from it, going yeah. back to the other thing about the arts, it's like people, people just don't really understand visual arts. And you can work. There is a lot of work in visual arts but people never see that all they see is the glossy stuff yeah. and that is what i was talking about before yeah but i completely yeah completely see where you're coming from and that's that's what so I, I don't judge them for you know being no. like how could you because i'm looking at me going how did i yeah 
but you know you get there yeah well like you like you probably see some people and they're working at Kmart full time and, mm. and all credit to them but you probably think the same thing like how how could you do yeah. that oh yeah I mean I bartended um, I've done so many weird oh, jobs oh yeah so, so, so have we <laughs> I all I still do strange yeah. jobs so have we all like oh yeah we, we all do um, but yeah let's talk about some of the people you've worked with so you mentioned mm. Jeff Horn you've done a couple of Murals mm. for Jeff Horn. You did the Green Hornet. You did uh, the Hornet Wings mm. for him, um, and then also, I also did his logo in in the gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought you yeah. did that. I saw it on a wall on your Insta. That's bloody cool. Yeah. But he's just such a humble bloke, such a mm. nice guy. Like he is. He you see him is. box, and he's scary as fuck. Mm. And then you talk to him, and he's just mm. the nicest, yeah. kindest yeah. bloke. Yeah, that's such a common thing. Yeah. Um, what about, like, so Darius Boyd, mm. Jonathan Thurston, mm. Dennis Hogan? Dennis Hogan, uh, also amazing, lovely yeah. dude. But in person, he is a lot more intimidating. But because right. <laughs> you look at him, you're like, oh, yeah, this looks like a hard bloke. Yeah. But um, he's just lovely. Like, And a lot of them bring their wives and, you know, their, their kids because they're just like, oh, look at this thing I'm doing. It's, like, interesting. And we're like, yeah. Look. Um, yeah, or... Pretty much everyone that I've worked with has been quite quite lovely. Uh, the fact that they're there giving their time is, is you know, like most of them are nice people because that's, you know, people who aren't are just like, oh, fuck, I'm not doing yeah, that. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm not wasting my time. So, yeah, but it, it's amazing. Like, um, yeah, so, yeah, uh, Jeff Horn, the, the Green Hornet was the first one. You know, that was one of the ideas pitched and they were looking for a different graffiti artist, a, fr- a friend of mine. Um, and he just wasn't available at the time. So I was like, yeah, well, look, I I can do this, you know. Um, what do you need done? Oh, yeah, I can do that. So it was just a simple thing. And, yeah, it was, it was a... It's not a simple not thing. Our gra- not, our greatest, so awesome. not our greatest... Not our greatest... Uh, I'll, I will say that the background for that was actually like soffles and buttons. I didn't do that. And I oh, never right. took credit for that. Okay. Um, I put the the shadow over it. Okay. That was it. All that right. was all the first job was. Right, so it was. was a little bit simple. Yeah. Yeah. So I still couldn't do it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> after that, like it sort of went forward and we did other stuff. So yeah, I, we did uh, Alex Leopi, uh heavyweight boxer. Um, we did uh, some people from Socceroos. Yep. Uh, we also did Brisbane Raw. Uh, we were supposed to do the Firebirds um, a few times, but yeah. that kept not happening. Okay. Uh, one of those things. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Durston, Darius Boyd. Anthony Mundine, I forgot to mention. I didn't, he snuck in. Right. I He, he somehow got snuck in and did photos in front of a wall that I did for someone else. But it was... Oh, you're of, kidding. So yeah. the wolves weren't for him. No, they were eventually... They were originally... Um, I think we, we'd already used it and released it for... What was that? The... I can't remember now. It was... Um, it wasn't Dennis Hogan. It was someone. Yeah. Anyway, well... If it anyway, comes to it, just, yeah. I know that eventually we reused the wall for Hogan as a hurricane. I... I changed the same wall several times. Oh, really? It, it was the same wall in this art space and I just, you know, kept adding to the mural because the mural worked for the next project sort of thing. Right. It was at the old Jugglers art space, which is now uh, something else, um, Backdock, Backdock Art. So right. it's right in the middle of the valley on Brunswick Street yep. and there was a massive courtyard and a big wall and we were able to section people off, but... Yeah, worked with so many different people. It's I'm, how, even, I'm even forgetting some. We did did a Broncos player. Oh, Darius Boyd. Yeah, did we but we did. Him? Yeah, but we we also did someone. It never got released. He went over to oh. England. It was like a f- Broncos player went to England. Did like a f- Union Jack and stuff. I know I'm wearing a Blues jersey, but I do not care about rugby league game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry. I can't be more. I'm not. I'm. I'm not actually a big sports person. Yeah. You know, in general. Uh, but, you know, I definitely, you see these players and you're like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Know, oh, top of your game. Like. Still bloody cool. And and I think that's, you, you alluded it to it earlier. So you alluded to it earlier, just the appreciation like of, of someone who mm. has mm. achieved something mm. so high. Like, again, going back to just not having a passion or knowing what the passion is. Like, I, I can truly appreciate someone who's found something that they're so mm. good at. Like, I don't have a passion about visual art, but it's mm. so cool to talk to you about that. Mm. I don't. 
I don't really follow boxing too much outside of the big yeah, name fights. Yeah. But I'd love to tap, talk. Mm. I could talk to Jeff Horn all day about it. You know, like it's yeah. it's um it's so cool, and and it's just taking a step back to appreciate the hard work that someone else has been able to like accomplish and achieve. Mm. Have you seen your art, art evolve? Like, so you went to QCA, you did a, what was it called? Desolation. So is that part of the the printing and the drawing that you did at QCA? That you were yeah, referring wow, to? I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was, that was my major work. That yeah. was, that was what I finished with. So it was um, very free form drawing but it's done on like acid etched copper plates okay um not like, done on acid no not okay. done on acid right you know just um, the copper plates. it would have been more messy if yeah it <laughs> yeah so maybe it would have been more perfect it's they're they're an, they're a, uh it's an old printing uh method yeah. but you you know you basically tar coat um like like it's almost like putting bitumen i think sometimes we did use like a, a liquid bitumen okay you put it on a copper plate like a sheet of copper yeah. and you, you etch, like you draw with a needle point into oh, the tar and then you put it in an acid bath and it eats, it doesn't go through the tar, but it eats where you scratched. And then you can put ink into it and you got to rub the surface off and then you print it through oh, a press. Wow. So what I was doing is instead of transferring an image onto the plate, which is what most people do, cause there's no rubbing it out. I just was doing this sort of intuitive drawing of like working class people in, in difficult situations that I wanted people to be, to maybe just be familiar with and be like, yeah, no, I've been there. That's basically all I wanted people to do. So, but at the, it ended up like a, a book that I made because I had some experience with jewelry making. Um, so I made the book, but I also had a few lecturers there. Like I said, the lecturers make the experience at uni and they had a few who make artist books. And I thought that was amazing. So I made an artist book and that's sort of, I just called it desolation. Yeah. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> Pretty deep. Pretty deep. <laughs> I think it was a lecturer's thing, but yeah. yeah, it turned out really good. I've still got the original. Um, it's just a one off, but I did have a few people say, yeah, been there. Yeah. And I was like, accomplished. You know, like, yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. And you mentioned like, you, so you did it just through feel like you're, you're etching into the tar. Mm. You, can you see where you've etched? Or are yeah, you, you can see where you've etched. Okay, right. Like you can't be like, oh, that's in the wrong spot. Yeah, right. You can't rub it out. No, you so can't that's why some of them are a bit trippy, but it, it turned yeah. out really nice like the way. Yeah. No, it sketchy. did look cool. And then so after QCA sort of started spray painting then. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, towards the end. Yeah. There was a few things that got me into it. I got it. I got close to Juggler's Art Space and then I approached uh, Peter Breen who runs it there. Uh, jugglers still exist. They just don't have the property anymore because okay. the rent hikes and stuff. They've been there th 16 years. Wow. No, 13 years on that location. Three years prior, they were working out of somewhere else. Yeah. And they've always supported um, street artists and graffiti artists and stuff. They, even back in the day, they used to help them out in court cases. Peter Breen would go and, you know, stand for them in court cases That's for like happening. youth youth trials and stuff over graffiti charges. Yeah, and they've always supported up and coming artists in the arts community and run yeah. events and stuff. So I used to do a lot of, I, I asked to be involved and I helped, started helping out, became good friends and then was just in and out of there. Had a studio there at one point, like yeah. okay. used the walls and just practiced. Yeah. Yeah, I was lucky that way. Um, I'm just thinking about this now. Like I, I love... Like the kids, kids that, and this is just me completely generalizing, and I'm sure there's exceptions. I'm sure I might, I might even be wrong, but like kids that might get into graffiti when they're younger, that want to break the rules, that don't fit in at school, that don't, I, I guess, can't listen to an English teacher mm. speak for an hour in a row, you know, like they go to express themselves some way. It might, might some part of it might be I'm breaking the rules and I'm cool, <laughs> but another part of it is, is I guess creating art right and mm. for someone to go into bat like an adult to go into bat for a kid like that mm. like i'm sure has influenced so many young men and women oh and like kept them out of prison almost to give them yeah. a place to oh it's definitely kept some people out of prison it is it I, in saying it uh, it's mostly peter breen yeah. um and that was a completely non-for-profit organization as well like they paid their rents through the studios that artists rented uh which weren't expensive either um and and a few people who like contributed like regular donators board members that would like 
you know, constantly, you know, put those put those up to keep it running because people believed in it. Um, yeah, it's just got to a point where like no one was able to take it over, um, and so he's running it smaller scale now. He's still doing a lot of stuff with um, music in the hospitals, like okay. in hallways and stuff. Yeah, how's he doing that? What just going and playing? Oh, young hospitals? young musicians, like right. just playing. They they spend a period of time like just like even in like the parking stairwells, yeah, random hallways, stuff like that, and they'll just play music, you know, for people in hospital who are That's having a hard time, you know. So they're good. I love that. But that's, yeah, it develops that way through there. But yeah, the um, the other thing is, you you know, graffiti charges are. He'll talk talk about the laws. Like, so if I get caught, yeah, yeah, let's, like, because I don't know. Like, I I grew up in such a square, man. And I'd be like, oh, I couldn't even imagine spraying a fence Mm. that wasn't mine. Like, what, yeah, tell us about Mm. what it looks like in Australia. So a quick run. Well, okay. So where do I start this? The. So the laws, I don't know if they've changed slightly. As far as I know, they haven't changed in severity. I don't know how they've technically changed. But last I knew, like two years ago. Uh, do you want, I'll give you a disclaimer. Brody's not a lawyer. He's not a law expert. <laughs> no. Look this up yesterday. Yeah. Don't quote him on nah, anything. Don't, Just don't use quote this as, to get a yeah. general idea. Got to do this yeah. a lot. I can, <laughs> I, yeah. speak freely, brother. I'm going to say that... that you know, I know a few people who, who have experienced the back end of the law for graffiti in Brisbane, yeah. and I've had the rundown through different, you know, organisations and stuff. I've never actually looked up the current legislation or anything. Yeah. But it's a solid understanding in Brisbane that it's basically one of those three strikes situations. Um, and, and then you're in prison. Yeah. You're in prison. You're in prison. For spray painting. For a few years, yeah. That is incredible. Not a few months, like two to three years after your third strike. Wow. And the first two strikes are like five and ten grand or something. You can touch kids and be in jail for less time. That's it's fucking ridiculous. It's it's they've put it as like a category, I don't know what we do in Australia, yeah. category one. Yeah. It's it's there with drugs and firearms. Jesus Christ. Like it's literally that's why I said we have some of the harshest laws in the world. Like it's yeah. ridiculous. Like and the thing is they have, because they've put it, the reason the reason they put it on the same level as drugs and firearms is that they don't need a warrant to search for that. They can just bust in and take you down. If you if they think you're a drug or you're holding firearms or you're holding cocaine, they can Or you're holding spray you, paint cans. Or you're holding graffiti. Jesus Christ. The reason they do it is because graffiti artists are generally very clever at keeping themselves hidden because it's yeah. an alias. It's it, that's the other thing about it is graffiti is like you're doing something, but you can never take credit, credit for, for it. it. Yeah. Sure. So they put in this ridiculous time risk. People die all the time. Um, there's so much gang warfare involved, which a lot of the great graffiti artists I know try to avoid, but it's there. It's part of the hip hop culture. Yeah. And there's always going to be that in the hip hop culture. Yeah. Um, but the thing is though, most don't, don't keep records but they always have a sketchbook and if the police can get their hands on it, they can prove everything. Yeah. Well, they'd link that art in the sketchbooks to the art that they find on the bridge. So that's why they've put it in that category. So they can just raid you. That's crazy. And the problem is they, if they catch you doing graffiti piece, like if you're tagging something or you're doing a big piece or something, if they find it because graffiti artists, um, you have to earn your way to be a, a, a proper to that name. Like I don't go as a graffiti artist. I don't. I don't. I've never claimed myself as a graffiti artist okay. because that's something that you really have to earn. Like there's a lot of respect behind that term yeah. uh, in the community. So unless everyone knows your name without you ever telling them your name, then you're not, not a, graffiti a graffiti artist. artist. Yeah. So they there's an incredible amount of work behind that. So you know when 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 they find you painting something, they don't just find you for that. If it's very clear that it is your, that you have done this and that this name, whatever it is, you know, there's, there's like, oh, it's, we've, we've found these everywhere. Yeah. There's some on trains, there's some on council this, they there's some here, there's, they can get you for all of them. Yeah. So your three strikes can happen very quickly. <laughs> It is messed up. It is really messed up. It is something that we've tried fighting. Uh, Jugglers has tried fighting a lot. It's 
I'm obviously not a fan of like tagging shit that's not yours, obviously. Mm. Yeah. It just seems like such a harsh buddy. Well, that's the other thing. Like these are conversations I've had a lot in the past um, to do with just public awareness. So like the biggest thing I hear, especially when doing jobs, um, is that they're like, oh, I love graffiti, but I hate that tagging shit. And then it's like in the graffiti community, generally uh, there's sort of a code of conduct you know, that you don't have to write down. That's like, you know, you don't destroy personal property. Yep. You know, it's like don't tag someone's car. That's a dog act. Like don't do that. Like there's no need to Just do that. Like, like unless otherwise. they're like some asshole right-wing yeah. politician, you know, <laughs> don't tag someone's Are car. Are there no asshole left-wing politicians, Bodhi? It could be. About, yeah. could yeah, be. There definitely is. But, but, yeah, no, so. <laughs> um, but they... Yeah, and, and things like fences and stuff. Generally, if it's like private properties and stuff, like yeah. in the city, it's more common for things to get hit up because they're in like public streets, like yeah. main roads and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, okay, even though it's someone's private house, it gets done. Yeah. But in general, people don't go around hitting up private property, even small businesses. Like, oh, it's hard. Right? It's hard. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. don't, you don't really do that. You know, some people do because some people are in that game to be reckless, to be hard, True. to be like, I'm going to fuck everyone's shit up. Yeah. And they're the kind of guys who are walking around with knives, making sure people aren't spraying over their stuff. And calling themselves which graffiti artists. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they get a certain amount of respect in that. But, and no one messes with them because they're going to literally, That's so, you know, up. there has been cases where they show up to your door with a shotgun and yeah. shoot you. Jesus like Christ. that, that has happened in the last few years. So, you know, there's, in general, graffiti artists don't want to destroy property. It's mostly council. It's yeah. like, and then the council's like, oh, you're paying for it. Yeah, as a taxpayer. And it's like, okay, yeah, well, a lot of it isn't even that ugly. And then the stuff that kind of is, people don't even care about it. And then the council, they charge rates that are just ridiculous. You know, like there's, there's certain businesses and stuff that will inflate everything and that's what that's what the government does they inflate everything they just put a, a price over to cover themselves but anyway it's like generally the point is the greedy graffiti artists don't want to destroy your personal shit yeah. and most of the tagging shit is yeah it's early development stuff like there's yeah. young kids who are restless you know it's, but, it's like everything there's there's going to be the bad seeds that ruin it for everyone mm. and, um, and yeah like the the young the uh, the juvenile the inexperienced mm. the immature people mm. that just don't know what they're doing yet and just no. trying to figure out life um, yeah a lot of it is like it, it's about attention it's yeah. and it's not attention and it's like give me attention it's more like there's people living really bad lives who have no love from anyone and they're literally writing on the wall to be like, I exist. Yeah. Like I exist guys. Like I'm here. Like that, that's what it is to a lot of people, you know, that's what we all want. And eh? without the tags, you don't get the graffiti yeah. because it's a build up. You got to start with the tags. It's so it's an, it's a, it's, it's a diverse thing. It's an interesting topic. There's, it's hard to say this or that is a sure thing. Oh, well, there's, there's nothing ever that's black and white. Mm. Eh? But, um, but the laws are just, yeah. yeah. It, it does seem like a too harsh a penalty. Mm. It seems incredible. Um, it Part of the street code as well is there like code to not go over someone else's work. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's a. Um, what, if, what if I look at a wall and I'm like, that's actually pretty shit. So I'm. Gonna <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. The yeah. rules and the rules. The, the general. Uh, thing is there that code or whatever be like yeah, yeah this can be painted over this can't be painted over yeah well there's there there is a certain thing to it so okay it, it's a matter of like if you can't top it don't go over it right that's the general thing yeah. it's like also there are territories because it's hard to find good places to paint of course um so even if you're not into gang stuff or like um violent culture um there still is a degree of stay the fuck out of my area. Yeah. And usually there's crews. That's what crews are. And a lot of them originally were based on train lines. It's like, okay, the Redcliffe line or the, you know, Caboolture line, that's this cruise area. Okay. And if someone's coming from the south side and rips a piece over yours, that's just known disrespect. Yeah. Like it means disrespect because yeah. you don't do that, you know. But it's generally, so even if it's better, it's like, what are you doing here? Why do you have to travel all the way out to Caboolture 
and onto the train line, go through all that effort and paint over my piece. Like that's disrespect. Yeah. But in general, it's like if it's in an area and it's not like a known area and there's different pieces, like, if you're like, yeah, I can top it, you yeah, do it. And people are generally like, oh, yeah, that's rad. Like, it's it's a general commentary. They appreciate the art. Yeah. yeah, like you talk to different graffiti artists in the scene and it's constantly an ongoing conversation. They're like, oh, and then they run into each other and they're like, oh, man, like that piece you did over my piece like three weeks ago, that was fucking great. That's that was cool. sick, man. Like, and it's like, oh, yeah, I wasn't sure. Like, I didn't mean any. It's like, nah, it's all good, man. Like, yeah. that was awesome. Like, it's like I went straight over yours anyway. So, you okay. know, yeah, like. There's a lot of that. It's cool. Like, but yeah, like real respects real eh? That's yeah. That's really cool to hear. It's but there um, are, yeah, there are people who are like real sketchy and yeah. you, and you see that piece on the wall and you're like, if I go over that, like I'm fucked. Yeah, so gonna, you don't I'm do die. it. Yeah. 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 Right. There's people who are really, shit. really hectic yeah. and you're just like, yeah. stay away. Like I've even had other artists be balls like. in black spray, spray paint and then yeah, you get killed for it. Cause they use the same name. Right. So. Yeah. If someone's got this name and someone goes, oh, stay away from that dude. Like, don't touch his stuff because he will find you. Like, he does that. Like, and that happens, you know. <laughs> it's not even a joke. It's just actually happens. So, you just go, yeah. I'm not touching that at all. And you walk away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It sounds smart to do that. Gonna <laughs> yeah. Were you going to chime in, big fella? Were you going to chime in? I saw you pressing the button. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It legit happens. Yeah. And you're like, dude, far out. Like, I just painted your piece over. It's not <laughs> worth a shot of you. Like, <laughs> but those dudes are like, don't ever come back again. Don't fuck yeah. with me again. And they get off on that. You know, like, yeah. there's like, people everywhere like that. Yeah. There is. There is. And those people are probably also into the other big, big two that you mentioned the guns and the drugs mm. and all the fun yeah, stuff. Very possible, yeah. Usually. Is, is there any like uh, artists that you really appreciate and look up to that you, that you can shout out? Like I, I, the, the one that I follow and I've followed for some time and I know a lot of people in Australia know him is Lush Sucks. <laughs> and uh, just because he does the really funny sort of memes, you see him all over Melbourne. Like you're just driving down the street and you see the bloke in the green morph suit on, on the wall saying <laughs> like poopy or some shit. Like he's, he's just a, obviously does some really funny art, but like, and if you haven't checked him out, go check him out. But is there any that you, like, really love to, to see the new work? Oh, or? I, I could shout out so many people. Yeah. Because I was fortunate, the way I was at university, actually, I was fortunate in the same way. I have this kind of weird luck that follows me. But at, through Jugglers, Jugglers handled most the council jobs, um, large-scale commissions, big companies that would come to them for mural artists. So... Mm -hmm all the big mural artists were contracted through jugglers. So I ran into everyone who was worth knowing in yeah, that scene, that's awesome. the mural scene. And, you know, a lot of the first guys were heavy duty, long-term graffiti artists because there wasn't really mural artists besides sign writers at that point. And it's become a big mess lately, to be honest. Um, but when you say mess, sorry to cut you off, what, what do you mean? Just like the crossover oh, the, work or? street art has become commercial commercial that's the street art is commercial yeah. like the idea of street art and people are usually talking about murals like street art includes installations and stuff too right. but when people are like it's street art they're usually talking about graffiti looking yeah. murals that are legal and companies can be associated with. True. And they're true. the people who are like, but I hate that tagging shit. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, yeah. you know, like, it, and then a lot of these artists are being forced to do stuff that's not their origins because it's shifting people away and now it's being exploited. It's just a weird, weird place right now. It was such a thriving, incredible scene that was pushing buttons as early as like 10, 10 um, as not that far long ago as like 2010, 2016, stuff was going off. And then after that, it really got picked up worldwide commercially. Like I can't speak for being in other countries when yeah, this happens. But in general, we all noticed like a sort of a global acceptance of something. Yeah. And we and it's not really defined yet, but it's trying not to be too commercial. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's a bit of a a weird place now like work is there's so many people doing it because it's like legal yeah and you know people can so there's, 
Yeah. It's still extremely hard to get work in Brisbane in terms of big walls. It's like you, you mentioned that you hadn't listened to Zach's uh, podcast yet. And he, like no, we, I, haven't, we, I haven't had time. We spoke sorry, briefly Zach. about, um, yeah, you better be sorry, Brody. I, I haven't listened oh, to so, your sorry stuff Sorry for either. calling you out, yeah, by yeah. the way. I apologise. Just <laughs> chucked out of the bus. He's probably not listening to this, so it's all yeah. good. Uh, but no, no, he, uh, we were just speaking about like the hip hop culture and, and obviously mm. how it's grown in the last couple of decades in Australia, yeah. but- we also spoke about, well, like in my experience in Melbourne, it seems to be further ahead than it is in Brisbane. Mm. And now I'm sort of hearing similar things from you. Would that be true? Like in Melbourne, is I guess the, the scene a bit more accepting or, or open to new artists, to emerging artists, artists who are working? Mm. So Melbourne is uh, accepting of culture in general. Yeah. That's their, that's their thing. And they've embraced it. You know, the government has fully, the council, just like, yep, this is this is our tourism edge. You know, so right, everyone's accepted culture there. So everything, like, down to the, that's why people move there. So, like, it just gets filled. Anyone who doesn't want to be there has moved out. So it's basically just become a hub. That's why Melbourne is so often talked about. Um, you know, and you go there and you, like, you walk down two streets and you're like, I... Like you think you're in like another planet, like everything's different. Like it's chop and change. Like there's so much information. Like sometimes I can't even be in Melbourne for long because I'm like, there's too, (laughs) too many different things happening, you know? Um, But yes, the hip hop culture, that's like I said before, like uh, graffiti is definitely a part of that, you know? Um, And all of it has progressed to the point where at the same sort of point, you know, it's being accepted as a general mainstream daily occurrence now like it's not like an edgy mtv culture yeah. anymore like it's like yeah you this like is everywhere urban, hey like anyone can do it yeah. yeah like it's sort of yeah it's it's not this far away thing that you know that if you get into any part of hip-hop culture in the past it's sort of like oh you're you're doing something that's um you know like it's just like saying someone's a goth or something. It's like, oh, you're yeah. you're in that scene. You know, yeah. like it's a scene. But now it's like, no, it's an industry. Yeah. So it's become more accepted and more embraced by yeah, everyone. Companies, general people, like access to. Like you, you look at internet and stuff, like access has just broadened everything. Do you reckon that's part you just mentioned industry? I just had this mind explosion. Like mm. I, you, you mentioned goths, like in high school, you had like the goth kids and you had like the, the hip hop kids or mm. whatever. And like, I don't know if that still exists in school. I don't go there anymore. I'm, I'm not allowed to. I think it'd probably always be a thing. I think yeah, well, high schools are to. always a place of like, where do I fit? And they yeah. have groups. Well, yeah. Well, what, where I was going with that, I, like I can't, I can't go within 50 meters of schools, unfortunately anymore, but <laughs> I, mean, I was like, <laughs> like they've all come industries. Like people can make money from everything. everything. Like, so uh, everything's becoming more accepting mm. almost because someone's making money from it. Because someone's done it. You're like, yeah. oh, well, there's plenty of proof it can be done. Yeah, yeah right. I, I just, yeah. I'm but yeah, I've run, in, I've run into Zach in some weird places just because, and in general, just because the, the hip hop scene crosses over, but especially Brisbane, small yeah. for that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I've even run into him in airports. I don't know, going two different places. <laughs> But um, yeah, Quite crazy. Yeah, great man. And when you have a listen, definitely let me know. Going back to what you asked me before. Yes. So, through jugglers, I met so many people everywhere. Oh, and yes. I'm still connected to them. Yep. You know, and I like to consider them friends. I don't know what they consider me, but uh, colleagues is well, yeah. So, you know, I've been fortunate to to meet like all those big names that you hear about, and still be able to talk to some of them. Um. Uh, I don't obviously, you know, I, I, I can always talk to Russell, so uh, Soffles. I can always talk to him when I meet him. Oi, Glenn, sorry, bro. Glenn, Jay Z told us about Soffles. Jay Z is a bloke we used to work with, and he's he loves his uh, graffiti, mm-hmm. loves his street art. And he's he I, actually, I think I sent Soffles a, a message on his website to get him on the podcast. Yeah. yeah, mate. He, yeah, so he's usually one of the first names to come up. It's become yeah. one of those things where people are like, "Oh, do you know Banksy?" Yeah, it's like, yeah, do you know right. Soffles? It's like, yes, because yeah. Soffles is he's done. He 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 did the dream sort of thing. It's like he led know, the way. He paved the way. Yeah, and 
like he's just you know he's done stuff for ESPN. He's traveled the world. He's made some incredible videos with Selena Miles, who's just incredible at what she does. Um, he's like he's done everything, and he's he's a machine. You don't un- nobody understands how he does what he does because he's just he does that thing that you picture famous artists doing, disappearing into another world. But when you see somebody paint a two story building. In like three hours, you're like, how is that possible? Like, even I go, that's, that's a, how do you do that? Like, he's got what he does down pat and he knows what he's doing. And he is, again, one of the loveliest, most humble people you'll meet. Like, um, but yeah, he's, so he's, he's painted a BMW for the street art festival just recently. It's in the valley in the display. Yeah. Like, in, in the, well, you know, those window stores. Yeah. Can you send me the photo? Um, Probably. Yeah, because we'll chuck it up again to show people. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it's definitely on there. Um, so, yeah, like, even, oh, yeah, even the Street Art Festival is going. But, yeah, so, but aside from that, you got, like, the bright side is if you've been anywhere around the East Coast, it, South, West, like, um, the first silo done in Queensland was done by Drapple. Okay. Um, uh, Drapple and Joel, like, Zookeeper. Shit, I hope I got that right. <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, Zookeeper, you know, uh, you got, yeah. um, oh, there's just uh, there's so many. There's so many people I could shout out. Like, I've even been lucky enough to meet, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling with these names tonight. Um, <laughs> I put you on the spot, I'm sorry. No, 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 I just uh, literally can't remember these names right now. Uh, I'd love to meet Gimmicks Born a bit more. He's incredible. He blows my mind. Um, oh my god! I had it. He did the. He he's he's doing those. He does them in war zones. He did one in Chernobyl. Oh really? In a hazmat suit. Um, wow. Oh my god! I can't remember. Yeah. Goodness. All right. It'll come. Um, up. We'll flash it on the. Yeah, screen. it'll come up. He's yeah. all right. So there's a giant portrait next to the Hyundai Center. Yeah. Uh, it's like 10 stories or something. Yeah, Harness Center in Brisbane. And Bri- in Woolongabba. Yeah. He did that one. Um, yeah. What's it of? So, uh, just have a face. He does portraits of people. Um, usually does them in monotone colors. He's done them on the side of a ship, like in Nova Scotia or yeah. something. Could, he still can't yeah. remember this bloke's name. Oh, you know? my God. No, I know his Wait, name. Is, I just, it's is gone. It, is it? Is it? I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Guido Van Helton. Guido. Hey, there Guido we go. Van Thanks, oh, Jamie. Yeah. I think after Appreciate I was saying it. like get bees and gimmicks born, I got, I lost it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Guido. Yeah. No, Guido sure. Van Helton. I'm a lot sure of people know that you. name because he's yeah. massive. Like yeah. he does some of the biggest stuff you've ever seen, but I've met all these guys, yeah. but yeah, there's uh, the bright siders. Um, yeah. They're some of the, the closest I am to in Brisbane and they do, if you've ever seen, as I was going to say, the like the silo projects, yep. Unity water towers, yeah. They've done most of those. Okay, like they're incredible and have they're you, lovely people. Have you done some silos? No, I haven't done any silos. Did you yet. share that? That that's like a milestone. Yeah, like, okay. yeah, yeah. But now it's like they're filling up fast. Yeah. So I think by the time I get a chance, <laughs> I forget what I saw some silos driving from Melbourne to Brisbane. And mm. I just remember being so taken aback by them, but I just yeah, I can't for the life of me remember what mm. they were of. Yeah, they're reviving communities like yeah. all over the place. The place um. I can't remember the place either. The one in Queensland made it onto a limited edition stamp. Wow. That was the highest selling stamp in the world that year. Unbelievable. And like stamp collectors are crazy people. It's the but beauty of art, eh? Worldwide, like, yeah. They, they made the first 3D stamp yeah. based on the silos. Right. So there was like, I think there was a Guido Van Houten one. Yep. There was two other ones from South Australia and there was the one from Queensland, which was the one that um, Drapple and Joel did and they that town was I think 2013 or something yep. was about to lose its postcode that's how few people it had left Jesus. they were about to shut the town down they were going to take their postcode away and after the mural the they're definitely not going to lose their postcode yeah. and they funnily enough were on this stamp that was the <laughs> highest collecting stamp and that's it's amazing. Absolutely. Like, it's That's a great so story. Cool. And that town is thriving now yeah. because of that. You know, the the grey nomads have, like, a new thing to do. Yeah. They're like, yeah, oh, let's go see stop. all the silos. Yeah. Like, it just takes people off the track out west when they wouldn't have done it before because they're like, let's go do the silo trail. Like, yeah. it'll be, like, a huge adventure. Man. So it's just breaking, like, the conversations I've been having uh, lately. 
is just it's just breaking the boundary for what people ask for. So artistic freedom is something that's really hard to negotiate um, as a contractor. So if you're selling your own art, people buy it if they like it, whatever. You do what you want. Yeah. I would say I'm a contract-based uh, artist, a commission-based artist. Yeah. I have pretty much always worked on, you know, with people, like any other contractor. Like I have all the tickets and the insurances and all that stuff that anyone else – you know, running a business as a contractor needs to have. And when you're, you're talking with someone, you're checking the site out, you have to like quote, you know, you have to balance your material costs. You have to do all that stuff um, like any other tradesman has to do. Um, and so when you do that with people, they don't think about street art. First of all, the, the, the cost of it, you know, for some reason people have this warped understanding of what it should cost. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is like people don't want to adventure very much. So there is a saturation of, and there's nothing against portrait artists and realists, yeah. but there is a saturation of portraiture, realism, yeah. uh, animals, you know, native wildlife, yeah. stuff like that. And that's great. You know, especially native wildlife and stuff needs to be promoted, endangered species and stuff. But it's, it's a trend. It's like people want that. And so artists who don't do that are doing that now, right. you know, and it's like you never get to. a chance to do something that people just go, wow, yeah. I've never seen that before yeah. because they're seeing the same thing. And now people are just like, oh, yeah, it's just yeah. another silo. You know? It's because we're just bloody humans. Eh? We get stubborn. <laughs> and the reality is that the people that want the art aren't the ones doing it. So we don't have the brain. We can't mm. imagine or see what you can. We just see our yeah. leopard. It is, it is a tricky thing. A tree. Yeah. Yeah. I've become good at being able to. Work like with trying, people's ideas yeah talking um but it's a it's a political thing you know it's yeah. like can we and i understand that too you know yeah. as you know someone doing this work you can't put something in public display that's going to put you at risk of, of you know being sued or being inappropriate or being well mate can you, know, can you even put anything up there any then like you'd get in trouble for everything these that's days. why they it's stick to the same bloody things. ridiculous Portrait of yeah someone's face, a, a tiger kid or whatever yeah, there's, yeah. A, there, there's a there's an issue with like you know oversaturation of female images it's of always course. like just, you know there's there's all that stuff like but then if you yeah if you don't put diversity up there if you only paint two white blokes mm -hmm. where's where's the asian mm. kid you know everyone needs an asian bloke to balance out the diversity sorry well man, that's I've one really no played that card you never <laughs> see any asian you, you don't ever see any asian representation either like yeah, on, yeah. on the wall you never see it yeah ever so that is. Well, is it, is it racist for a white person to paint an Asian person? I think it, as an artist, you have to be careful about what where your voice lies. Yeah, because, that sucks. You know, you can advocate for somebody else. Yep. But going around and making a, a business out of painting, yeah, Aboriginals or uh, Indigenous Australians, of course, or people from other countries or cultures or anything like that. It's yeah. a, it, it's like there's a, there's an extent to like what's appropriate and what is like exploitation or it's not your place, you know, yeah, like even true. if you're doing amazing stuff, it's like, well, it's still not your place yeah. to, cause you're, you're doing it, it for someone else. Like no one's asked you to do it sort of thing. So yeah. there, there's an extent. And yes, most people painting are white. I don't know many people of color doing this kind of work. So there, it's an, one of those common things in Australia. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Just common about every, yeah, everything, right? Like, um, even on this, I I never thought I would have to think about what I was gonna say. Like, oh, like when I started this, I'm I just said I'm gonna be honest and just speak <laughs> freely and say whatever I want, and I still do that to an extent. But and I started thinking, oh shit, if I say something dumb, then I can't ask someone like mm -hmm. Jeff Horn to come on the the podcast because now I'm the kid who said something racist, or like I'm the kid who talked about drugs once, mm. you know, like. Um, yeah, it's, 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 but then also I don't want to hide or don't want to shy mm. away. It's, it's, yeah. so, it's, so. it's sort of that complication that, um, comedians come into all the yeah, time. True. It's like, what is, you know, restriction and what is, um, inappropriate, you know, yeah. and some people deliberately push it on purpose because that's what they, they're going for yeah. a market. Well, you if know? you do it in a genius way, then mm. all power to you, but mm. you could stuff up like that. Yeah. That's mm. obviously hard to do. Yeah. The best place to look, uh, for like to get a good idea of what's like um okay th for this understanding and stuff is actually like intersectional feminism it's okay. a particular and the most new age brand of feminism 
but they actually advocate for most like they're they're basically like the best one of the best authorities um today for a- anything in in terms of like sensitive issues intersexual feminism in, intersectional, intersectional, intersectional feminism. feminism yeah i've had, i've gone into it deeply a lot too yeah. and it yeah it is absolutely uh like it's, it's an amazing thing because people yeah. have a lot of prejudice against feminism and they're, they're well, really out of place like but yeah. intersectional feminism covers everyone yeah it's a broad thing and the yeah. thing is they you know a lot of the time there's a lot of people whose voices aren't included that's why they do right. that and like i think at the core of fe- so. feminism like if you define feminism mm. i'm a feminist mm. i want us all to be tra- treated equally and mm. and to live the lives that we all want to live mm. and to not be prejudiced mm. and to not be put down based mm. on our gender and then goes further race and mm. where you live and um socioeconomic status yeah. and everything there's so many like, crossovers just we're all human mm. we spoke about it earlier yeah. So just, but, um, yeah, basically, unfortunately, yeah, you cover that. Yeah, unfortunately, feminism has been demonized because you do mm. have the chaos, the people yeah. that take everything too far. Yeah. It, well, there's there's a lot of um, uh, what people call white feminism, and that's like a very <laughs> old school form of feminism. Yeah. It's like they've never progressed past, like, yeah. Yeah, we want to be thing. paid the same as our CEO brother. You know, like, it's, it's a lot deeper than that. So there's all different yeah it's like it's like any issue like there's going to be people in different parts of the conversation you know and sometimes the worst parts or the most difficult parts are the ones that get a lot of press and that's what people see things as yeah the loudest but yeah the the reason i brought it up is just because if you're ever trying to figure out you know what is appropriate what's inappropriate and and i like to think of it as um because people like to say politically correct i don't like that term i don't like politically correct because that seems like what we're talking about it's like oh you're you know doing something because you don't want to offend people it's not about that it shouldn't be because you don't want to offend people it should be because you care about uh, like hurting them you know about you know offending people like hurting their feelings not about Oh shit! Like I've stirred I don't up some walk bad on publicity. Yeah, yeah, by, yeah, like by accident. Yeah, like, so I like, like it's to all say, about the intent, right? Like I'm going to say something, and mm. hopefully it's not with the intent of hurting someone else. Yeah, so yeah. it's about just well, awareness. So, so I like to say socially conscious. Like, yeah, okay. socially conscious. I'm conscious of this is important to you, so I'm going to make an effort to accommodate you. Man, you that's know? beautiful. There are there are extents where it is very difficult. It becomes yeah. difficult in certain situations. And different walks of life, everything crosses over. Yeah, now, I don't judge people. Like a lot of it comes down to judging people for who they are, but they never, no one ever looks, you know, where people come from. Like even the people that are the worst, like offenders, you know, they're, they've usually grown up in a really tight, negative community. So straying from that isn't really part of their life ever, you know. So... They never really change, you know, so they still are that person. But anyway, we don't mean to take this well, too so deeply political or anything. No, well, I'm thinking... I, just if, if, you, if you're worried yeah. about it, that's a good way to start. No, inter- and for anyone else. Who yeah, wants to, intersectional know. feminism. Intersectional feminism. And uh, I keep going to say intersexual for some mm-hmm. reason, like it's a new gender. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, nah, man, it, it's telling me that we should probably do this again and, and maybe have something else and have a deeper chat and mm. have a really good yarn, but... Look, I really want to say thank you for your time, Bodie. It's all right, thank no, you. Not Brody anymore. And, um, <laughs> can if you want. I often tell people they can say either or either yeah. because half the time no one knows how to say either of them. So yeah, well, I get called Can't Kyle. Pronounce them. Uh, yeah, we all get. Who cares? It's just a word that or a sound Kyle. coming out of a mouth. Yeah, that's gone to in your direction. Wait, you mean your name's not Kyle? Yeah, no, it's not. Believe it or not. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, thanks, thanks so much, Bodie, for your that's time, right. dude. And. I really loved hearing you speak just about like the world, like I, mm. like the the world of art. Like I've learned so much about just street art mm. and, and the industry that I just never knew about before. And yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do this again sometime. Man. Yeah, hundred percent. Love to talk more about the weird, the weird world that art oh, is because man. we didn't really get that deep. But it's yeah. it's a really complex scratch weird the surface thing, for next time you know, that you got to navigate and working as an artist. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, I can't wait, man. But thank you. And thanks to, again, Moby Tech Queensland. So Wayne Brockman and Moby Tech Queensland are the number one mobile computer uh, company technicians in the world. Brody, have you ever had troubles with your computer at home? 
Yep. You got two that need to be fixed, right? <laughs> there you go. You're going on those bad there websites, we aren't you? And you're getting pop-ups now <laughs> and yeah, you can't get rid of them. Isn't that the case? Yeah. Um, well, I'm not putting words in his mouth. But, but look, you, bro, do you call my – you call Wayne. I have call, a business computer. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you call Wayne and you mention Carl BTV, you get 10% mm. off. Oh, he nice. can He can remote desktop in. He can come and visit if he needs to. Mm. He can replace the computer if it needs to happen. And he'll give you as much advice for free as he can. He's always up for helping people out. And really appreciate Maybe Tech Queensland for supporting this program. And Broads, thanks again. Really appreciate it. All good. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn, for your – thanks, Jamie, for your effort. Way to pull up that name earlier, bro. Way to pull up that name earlier. Look at you, man. We're evolving. Hey, hey, I, I'm literally, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're evolving I'm sorry, as Gito, company. man. You're <laughs> A lot of people know your name. I just forgot it. <laughs> You're my boy, Blue. Thanks, guys. See you <laughs> next week. Oh, subscribe and like and do all that fun stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah, definitely.